Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lombardo with Gladfast Consulting and today I'll be doing a demo of change management in ServiceNow. When I click on create new in the left hand navigator, I'll be taken to what's called an interceptor page and this gives me an option to choose between three different types of change requests out of the box. A normal, standard, and emergency. A normal change is a change without predefined plans that require approval and cab authorization. A standard change is a pre-approved change that allows us to also leverage change templates. Emergency change is an unplanned change necessary to restore service. These changes require cab authorization only. I'm going to go ahead and start with a normal type of change. I'm going to go ahead and just review the fields very quickly. We have number, which is a unique identifier for this change. Requested by is a person who is requesting the change. Category, we have some out-of-the-box options for categorization. Configura configuration item is the item or service affected on this change. We have a priority, risk, and impact. Short description, description. As far as the state, if you notice, we have the states across the top just for a process flow to help us uh, visually see which state the change is in. And if you notice, I only have the ability to go to the next available state, which is assess. I don't have the ability to skip over any state whatsoever. <clears throat> There's a conflict status, which leverages the conflict checker. We have assignment group and assigned to the people who will be owning this change. In the planning tab we have a justification field and really it's just the benefits of implementing this change and impact if this change is not implemented. So if we do not actually go through with this change what is the impact on the business? Implementation plan, what is the plan to actually implement this change? Obviously hopefully we're not create, creating a change without actually having a plan um, to implement that change. Risk and impact. So what are the impacts, uh, risk and impacts that could affect the business? Backup plan. If this change fails, how, how are we going to restore service? How are we going to go back um, to restore service? Test plan. What are, our, what are our plans to actually test that this change was successful? The scheduling tab is pretty straightforward. When are we planning to start and end this change? And when did we actually start and end this change? Conflicts, so I'm not going to go too deep into conflicts in this demo, but we do have the ability to identify and run a conflict checker on predefined conflicts that we've entered into the system. Notes is just our, just going to be our log where we're updating and communicating um, the status and, and the progress of this change. Closure information is obviously the information when we're updating when we close it. So if I go ahead and save this change, I'm going to put some information here. I'm going to say this is a test change. I'm going to go ahead and put software as an assignment group. And I'm going to go ahead and request approval. Now if you notice we're in the assess. Now if you notice we're in, now in the assess statement. And if we scroll down to the bottom and actually the, the Right underneath the state, it's going to tell us that we're actually waiting for approval. So there, you know, if you just come to this change and actually look at it, hey, wh why is what's going on in the assess state? So that tells me if I scroll to the bottom, there's an approvers tab here, and you'll see I have five approvals that I need to approve. Because I'm an admin, I'm able to approve on behalf of these users. So now that our change has had our preliminary, our normal change had its preliminary approval. We're now in the authorized state, which is another round of approvals. And again, it just may be a little bit confusing, but the, the process is we have a kind of um, technical approval. So a team um, that is responsible for maybe this particular CI or this particular group does approve it. And then we have what's the, um, the change advisory board approval. So again, it does look like just a, a lot of approvals, but there is some rhyme or reason, rhyme and reason to this, uh, to the approvals that we have here. <clears throat> so now that we've go ahead we've had approval from both from both teams, the change is now scheduled. 
and me as the implementer, I'm going to go ahead and click implement. And now you notice that now we're in an implement state, and at this point, the the user is actually now implementing. Now, obviously, if we were in a real life scenario, we would actually have all this information populated, and we would not have any approvals um, until um, that information is validated and and obviously accurate. I, I'm just kind of moving quickly because there is just a lot to cover. Um, and I didn't populate any of this information. So just want to show you guys high level, just in the out of the box workflow, um, and just really how, how easy it is and, and really does get service. Now does give you a great structure out of the box of, you know, out of the box fields and, and workflow to really get this going. Uh, the only thing that kind of does need to be implemented really is just required fields, just making sure that these fields are actually populated before you're able to go to different states. So after we're, we're done with this change, we have the ability to either hit this drop down and go to the review state, or I can hit this UI action at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the, the button here at the top. Now we're in a review state. Uh, so at this point, we'd actually be in either a post implementation review or make sure the change was actually successful. And now, um, now that I'm ready to close it, if I hit close, it's gonna tell me I do have required fields I need to fill out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, this was a successful change. And I'm just going to throw some information here just to satisfy the required field need and go ahead and close the change. All right, everyone, that'll conclude this change management demo. Again, my name is Michael Lombardo. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can email me at mike at glidefast.com. Thank you.